East Africa's number one economy has registered mixed performance in the latest economic survey released by the Kenya National Bureau of Statistics. Despite there being 742,000 new jobs in both the public and the private sector created in the country, several sectors performed dismally, contributing to a poor growth of the GDP. The country's gross domestic products expanded by 4.7% in 2013 compared to 4.6% in 2012. This is low, lower than what we had anticipated. However, the improvement, the slight improvement, is supported by a stable macroeconomic environment for the better part of the year. Put the, book, uh... the largest contributor to Kenya's economy suffered a setback of 1.3% in decline from 4.2% in 2012. Tourist arrivals, on the other hand, declined from 1.7 million to 1.5 million. And the decline in international arrivals may be attributed to various travel advisories by traditional tourist markets due to security concerns. Exports and import ratio deteriorated by 2%, with exports declining by 3% and imports increasing by 2.8%. The building and construction sector expanded by 5.5%. The decline in inflation to 5.7% from 9.4% was registered, improved largely due to increased supply of basic foodstuffs and stable domestic prices of petroleum products. The government now has solid plans for the next financial year. The world trade volume is also expected to expand at 4.8%, supported by a global commodity demand. The cabinet secretary says the country's prospects for enhanced growth are positive. However, the economy is faced with a number of potential internal and external risks that the ministry wants to avert by robust measures in agriculture and the transport sector. The government now wants every county to have at least one agricultural value addition planned. We expect operationalization of the development budget in the counties is expected to spur further economic growth now that the systems have been set up and the structures. We expect to see a lot more spending at the county level and also by the national government that has um, completely set up their structures. The macroeconomic stability witnessed in 2013 spilled into the first quarter of 2014 is likely to continue to the rest of the year. This with the commencement of the implementation of the second medium-term plan. The euro bond that is already trading at the Irish Stock Exchange at a rate of 102% has consequently pushed the government to bet their bottom dollar on reduction in domestic borrowing. According to the president, government will use the proceeds from the euro bond to fund infrastructure and development projects. I want to assure you that the government will spend this money prudently. Proceeds of both transactions will be used for funding of infrastructure projects in energy, transport and agriculture. Progress in implementation will be closely monitored through a delivery unit that has been set up in the presidency which will report on progress regularly and in any case no later than on a quarterly basis. Led by the Cabinet Secretary Henry Rotich, the National Treasury sailed through a roadshow to woo investors in the U.S. for the euro bond that was launched on 11th June. The bond was priced at 2 billion U.S. dollars at an interest rate of 6.6%. By the end of its trading yesterday, there was 500% of a subscription to a tune of $8.8 .8 billion. Rotich says among the factors that contributed to the oversubscription include a favorable credit rating that Kenya enjoys. We uh, uh, took a size of uh, 2 billion uh, US dollars and this comprised of uh, 500 million for a five-year bond priced at 5.875 interest rates with a maturity uh, of five years which is due in 2019. And 1.5 billion at 6.875 uh, with a maturity of 10 years due in 2024. President Uru Kenyatta says this opens a new chapter of lower interest rate regime in the country. All banks will use reference rates that will be renewed yearly besides a credit reference bureau that will be established. We will promote full discourse of bank charges, disclosure of bank charges 
to facilitate informed banking decisions by the public. This will entail introduction of an annual percentage rate for loans by the banking sector. The securities market competition will also be enhanced and the capital market will be subjected to reforms aimed at improving efficiency. Rotich says Kenya will also address the weak investment in the energy and agricultural sector. However, one of the advantages of a favorable trading in the euro bond is Kenya's diversified economy. The bond is trading very successfully in the Irish stock exchange with a premium, signifying that uh, the investor, uh, signifying investor confidence in our economy. Kenya is also expected to experience a reduction of fraud in financial services after it was upgraded from the list of countries stuck in the money laundering regime. The recent restructuring of the land registry at Adi House may have not come at a better time, but even with the move, the reforms in the land sector has a long way to go. This is according to a report released by the Land Development and Governance Institute that highlights categorical challenges facing both the National Land Commission and the Ministry of Lands and Urban Planning. According to the report, technical or more or less legal, political and administrative challenges have set the ministry reforms in a quagmire. Now see where we are as a country. S citizens not getting services. Money being lost. Public officers being paid just to squabble. You know, millions. They earn millions just to fight. Just to fight, give media, whatever, conflicting. Because laws were not done. Well, the National Land Commission Act and the Lands Act and an executive order on the organization of government looked at against the Constitution contain what the report refers to as inconsistencies that call for urgent attention. Article 67, Section 2 requires the Land Commission to manage public land on behalf of the national and county government, while Section 7, Subsection 3 of the Land Registration Act vests the power to establish land registries to the Public Service Commission. The overlapping of functions and roles of the two land sector bodies are clear in Section 6 and 7 of the Land Registration Act, where both the Land Commission and the Land Cabinet Secretary are bestowed upon powers to regulate the sector. This, land experts say, is a recipe for conflict. If there is ambiguity, whoever has institutional muscle will definitely prevail. So, and, and the country is not interested in setting laws that bring context, contests between institutions. Further from the legal and technical hitches, the institute found out in a survey that 68% of the respondents did not know the mandate of the National Land Commission and 98% of the respondents had not interacted with the commission. Those who have interacted with both the ministry and the National Land Commission are as confused since they are not getting any help. If the content of this report is anything to go by, then the rot ailing the land sector in Kenya is unlikely to end. The Land Development and Governance Institute is now calling upon the Parliamentary Committee on Lands, both from the Senate and the National Assembly, to come to the rescue by addressing the conflict in the laws. The allure of Twitter and Facebook have hit home in Kenya for the last two years, besides significantly changing and shaping Kenya's social media space. Then came in the instant messenger WhatsApp application. The rapid increase in using the app is predicted to set pace for more interactive communication in business and customer service. It will change business and we expect uh, enterprises and even the news media, media houses in Kenya and East Africa to begin to adopt that as a way to interact with their customers and with their viewers. The second trend of, uh, of the 15 that we, we see is, is one of the, the bigger ones to note. The big one to note, according to the report, is how social media have changed television viewership in Kenya. Everybody using a smartphone is expected to have the urge of directly participating in television programs. They want to create, they want to participate, they don't want to sit and just watch a news bulletin. But how can this audience actually dictate what's on the news bulletin, right? Because the news is for them. Now, what happens when they express their stake in it and are seen not maybe as an audience to consume something, but as a community to contribute to this final outcome.
One year on after devolved system of government was rolled out in Kenya, a devolved social media experience is another aspect to watch out for. The government that has been dubbed the digital government is right at the center of it all. With four million people leaving schools within the next four years, this administration has to contend that if there are 1.2 million people now on Facebook, then there will be about 5 million later. If there are 11 million internet users, there will be 15 million internet users because they are leaving school into a space that's digital. Our, our strategic plan plans until 2017. If the government is digital, it goes without saying that corporates in Kenya are on a catching up race. Don't be surprised if the Board of Governors will incorporate directors in charge of social media. Now this could be an evolution of corporate communications or, uh, or marketing uh, or corporate affairs but we expect that it's going to become clear that at, at that level, at a very senior level in enterprise and organizations today, we'll see that. In the, after the 2013 general election, we saw it, for example, at State House with um, Mr. Itumbi's position as Director of Digital and Diaspora. Social media inclusion in Kenya's society saw the 2013 general elections, the Westgate attack, and the celebration of Kenya's 50th anniversary trend on Twitter worldwide. Now to cashing in on such mega social media influences remains the next big thing to look out for as social media revolution and evolution continues. Synonymous to a developing country are images like these. Images of people who have been adversely affected by abject poverty. Chronic poverty remains predominantly a rural phenomenon, but as the deadline to achieving Millennium Goals quickly approaches, urban poverty is rising. A new report released by Development Initiatives captures the precarious nature of how many people try to escape from poverty. For example, 60% of Kenyans remain in poverty even after countless efforts to get rich. Another 40% succeed but eventually falls back to their previous state. Unless there are deliberate policies uh, which are focused uh, on people who are chronically poor, not just the general poor, but uh, those who are in extreme and chronic poverty, it's going to be very difficult to move uh, forwards as, uh, uh, as a people. NGOs and development-oriented donors from the first all countries have stepped in in fighting poverty. But over the years, it has been proven that they need to take a different approach other than offering aid. The work of NGOs tends to be uh, narrow and limited in nature and they can't reach the breadth uh, of uh, countries and regions and this is a role on which only governments can play, perhaps in partnership with development partners. According to the report, poverty levels in Kenya are primarily maintained by high population influx, inefficiency in institutions that lead to corruption and neglected subsistence farmers. Poor curriculums in Kenya schools has also played part in a big way. And whereas we make improvement in the bigger society in which we live, better schools, better, better public schools. Even with blueprints like Vision 2030 being susceptible to conflicts, fragile security and vulnerability to unpredictable climatic changes, the missing link to close the bridge in chronic poverty is expected to come from the people and not the government. Change comes from the people. When the people are determined that they need change, leaders will have no option but to provide that change. People have to ask. People have to insist. Will Kenya achieve a beyond zero chronic poverty level? According to the report, that is largely achievable, but only time will tell. <laughs>